friends, it's Krebsy, and I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. But we're back in the swing of things with War Thunder, and over the last few days, the devs have been releasing info in their dev diaries. Info about ground forces and how things will work. It's supposed to explain the different mechanics, but also get us hyped up, get us salivating over screenshots and gameplay footage, but they haven't done any gameplay footage, it's just so far been screenshots and explanations of how things are going to work. So here is Krebsy to summarize what they have been saying along with putting in my input into it. Alright, so yesterday's topic was about damage models with tanks, and I haven't done a video for that because I had Christmas and I was just away from home. I'll explain it towards the end of this video, but the topic that I'm focusing initially on is the one that they posted today, which is about the different armor, or armor, who different shells that they have in the game and what happens with them afterwards when you hit uh, a tank, what happens behind the scenes, what calculations go on. So, they like to loosely categorize their shells into three categories, AP rounds, HEAP, and HEF, uh, and those means armor piercing, heavy explosive armor piercing, and heavy explosive fragmentation. They're loosely categorized into those uh, because you get different types of shells, you, obviously with different calibers, different sizes, but for example, with the AP rounds, you can get non-explosive AP rounds, and then you can get explosive AP rounds, and they can have different sorts of explosive material in them. So it's not to say that they're all AP rounds and strictly just going to be like that and that's it. There's different components and different um, materials that go inside them and thus they work differently. There's different calculations that happen with them. Uh, so for example with the AP rounds, we'll focus on the AP rounds because those are going to be the most complex ones uh, out of all three shells. The AP rounds, the only difference between them is whether they have explosives in them or not and also their penetration values. So when you hit a tank, there are a few things that are calculated and taken into consideration. One is the trajectory, all right? And the trajectory depends on the mass of the shell, the initial speed at which it was propelled, and also the ballistic coefficient. In terms of killability, that means armor penetration depending on distance, so with armor piercing shells, they become less armor penetrative depending how far you shoot it from. So the farther the distance, the less armor piercing it will have. And that's because there is not as much kinetic energy behind it. Of course, if you can imagine if a shell is flying through the air, there's going to be air resistance and so it loses its damage potential. The kinetic damage potential uh, damage scheme from distance uh, is another thing that's calculated with killability. So kinetic damage scheme, uh, I guess that has to also do with the armor penetration and also what kind of splash effects happen afterwards and also the last thing that is taken into consideration with killability is the explosive characteristics so what is packed inside that shell and what happens from the that material inside it so they gave an example of the checks that happen when a tank is hit you get a few checks and they go in a series the first is the breach check now that uh, is either a yes or no check. Basically, if your uh, caliber uh, shell is several times higher than the plate thickness that hit that it hits, then it's an automatic penetrate. Uh, whereas if it's not, then it moves on to the next check, which is the bound check. Now this thing is a little bit confusing. I can't really decipher it, and maybe it's because I'm reading it wrong or because it's open to interpreta interpretation, but I think uh, this is uh, going a little bit off skew with what we're talking about. <laughs> but the way that the devs have wrote, written their blog, it's full of punctuation errors and spelling mistakes. It's it's kind of hard to decipher exactly. It's it's like a, it's a bit of a, rush, a rough English translation. So I don't exactly know what this is, if you guys can make sense of it, please tell me and I'll annotate it into the video. But it's a no bound check, and basically what it's saying is that uh, if the angle is 30 degrees or less, then there there's a chance of it being bound. And the smaller the angle, the higher chance of it being bound. At zero, an angle zero, then it's a 100% chance of being bound. Now I don't know if they're talking about it physically being bound, like 
being attached to the tank or if it's a spelling mistake and means bounce. I, that's really open up to the various interpretations uh, right there. And if I th had to think about it in logical steps, I could understand that a breach check would be the first one. Whether it's just an automatic assume, yes it's going to penetrate because you have an awesome tank versus a derpy little tank, then fair enough. And then I could imagine that there would be a bounce check next, whether the shell would automatically ricochet depending on the angle or, or, or not. And that's what I would imagine it to be, but if you guys could clarify it, then fair enough. So say if there's a, a no-bound shot, as they were saying, then it would move on to the penetration check. And this depends on the penetration value of the shell, the armor slope angle that it hits, the angle of the tank itself, the angle at which the shell hit, and those are taken into consideration if there's a penetration or not. So various factors right there. No penetration, if there is no penetration um, and there, there's explosive component inside the shell, then the shell will explode onto the exterior of the tank on the armor and it'll cause attachment damage. And what they've actually provided is a screenshot of apparently a component of a tank just laying in the grass, so so I don't know. I guess that's you know the exterior components of a, of a tank. I don't know if that's like the bins, like the tool bins, or if that's something actually critical like fuel tanks and whatnot. But that that kind of that's that's kind of interesting. Imagine you hit a tank, you only do superficial damage to it, and a fuel tank falls off or something, an oil drum falls off. Hmm, could that affect your tank at all? Well, uh, it's kind of interesting that they're doing this because, you know, a world of tanks, uh, everything is just an HP system. Uh, you get to module damage and whatnot, and it affects your crews and, and your actual tank itself, but there's not, like, any actual pieces flying off. And there's nothing actually representing this piece is flowing off your tank, and thus your tank will be failing in that component. There's nothing like that. But knowing War Thunder and how... in with War Thunder and planes, you know, you got critical damage on planes and you see wings coming off or elevators coming off and whatnot. Well, I guess it had to happen with tanks as well. Now you have parts that are detaching. Could that actually mean or translate something over to a critical function of the tank? That, that would be interesting to uh, find out more about. So, the next part is say if yes, a shell penetrates an armor piercing shell, then the shell damages the armor. And as it progresses through the armor, it loses penetration and kinetic damage proportionately depending on that armor thickness. And then it goes on further, so that makes sense. But at the same time, when it penetrates through the actual armor, it, pr it produces a shard cone. Um, and that can cause damage to modules and, and crew in, in that, in that, in that cr cone. So you don't only have that that uh, shell itself but you have secondary damage produced from from the fragments essentially of of the armor being ripped apart so the shell once it actually reaches inside the tank um it, it continues further from the armor and what happens is that it penetrates through any modules or crew in its way and it continues making penetration checks as long as there is uh, enough speed behind behind the shell if it hasn't exploded, hasn't exploded yet. And that makes it a bit inter interesting. So that's basically going to say, and now they didn't explicitly mention this with the crew, but they mentioned with the modules saying that if there's enough penetration, then it'll keep on going. So every single module has basically an armor thickness. And when the shell goes through it, it's going to lose a speed, connect damage, and and whatnot uh, as it goes through those components. So it would be interesting to actually find out whether from the devs or if someone has modding access to these uh, to the game files, if they could find out if what what these penetration thicknesses, these armor thicknesses of the individual modules are. If you're going to be that anal about you know you know like oh. I, I used an awesome tank shell, it should have destroyed every component. If you could, if somebody was that anal and they could find out all the game details, the very, very specifics of like the armor 
armor thicknesses of the modules. That'd be interesting. I'd, I'd also like to see the armor thicknesses of the crew members as well. Or would it just keep on penetrating through them? Do they have an auto-assume of zero millimeters on the crew? Yes, it will just rip right through crew members. Uh, that They were only speaking specifically about modules, but not the crew members. Uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting, that's all I'm trying to say. But uh, as I was saying, the, the shell continues on further and penetrates modules, or if it has a fuse because it has uh, an explosive component inside the shell, then within a certain distance between 0.5 to 1.5 meters inside the shell, it automatically explodes and then you have, you know, your own s different calculations going on with the sphere damage from the explosion uh, causing it to, causing uh, damage to the modules, causing damage to the crew and whatnot uh, that happens there. It's also interesting to note that armor-piercing rounds with no explosive component inside of it also causes secondary shard cones when it hits modules. Now, I don't know if that applies to crews as well, they didn't mention it, but <laughs> with, with the modules, they also produce small little shard cones uh, that cause secondary damage to whatever else is around it. I, I don't imagine that would happen with crew members. I, I don't think that <laughs> blood and guts splurting everywhere would cause a lot of damage to the, the tank itself. Maybe if like a, a kidney or something got stuck inside the uh, turret ring rotationary device. I, I don't know. That's just, that's just silly at this point. Uh, but that, that basically goes over the armor piercing round side of of how it's going to work. And that is the most complex shell. The HE shells and the HEF are much more simple. Uh, for example, the HE shells, they follow a system very similar to World of Tanks, funnily enough. Um, and it's where the HE shell doesn't lose penetration over, uh, over distance. Whereas AP rounds do lose penetration over distance, HE don't. And so you should be using HE against thin armor, where once it gets inside, it'll explode. Um, and, and what actually happens is when the HE round manages to penetrate a, a tank, it produces a jet from that point at which it penetrates. And that jet then carries on throughout the tank and it penetrates through modules and actually loses penetra penetration as it goes through modules and causes damage to them. And that jet length is limited between 2 to 4 meters. Alright. Uh, it's also interesting to note, again, with this jet, it develops uh, splinter cones with every impact, but it's much smaller than what AP shells cause with that secondary uh, shard cone being being produced. Now, with the HEF shells, uh, they're, they're more akin to aircraft HEF shells. Just This is what they were mentioning. And what they do is they cause spheres of explosive and splinter damage. And basically... When it hits a tank, if the blast wave strength is high enough, then it will penetrate the armor and deal damage. So, that is how the shells are going to work. Those are the checks that it's going to be going through, uh, and also what it's going to be doing to the uh, tanks themselves, to the crew members, to the modules, and, and, and whatnot. But I think it's also important to talk about what is going to happen to the tank itself once it's damaged. And this brings us up to the article that the devs posted yesterday regarding tank damage. So, the upcoming damage model on tanks. I don't know if you guys are going to hate this or not, but it is pretty much an exact... Well, not an exact, but... Pretty much a copy of World of Tanks, but in, in defense of War Thunder, defense, defense of Gaijin, I don't think there is a different way to do this if you want to have a system that has uh, critical damage on components in the tank, the modules, the crew, and also superficial things on the outside of the tank. I think this is probably the best way to do it, and, and it makes sense. But uh, what I did notice with the upcoming War Thunder tanks is that there's more detail and more things that you can hit inside of tanks in comparison to World of Tanks. So, for example, there's 11 things that they listed. The crew, the turret ring and rotation gear, gun elevation mechanism, gun breach, observation devices, ammo rack, transmission and gear, 
uh, engine, fuel and oil tanks, radiator, scope and periscope sites. So that's 11 things right there that they've mentioned. That is definitely more than in World of Tanks. And they were speaking about if you hit an ammo rack enough, then uh, it could destroy the tank or it could explode if you hit a fuel tank it will cause a fire and the fire might eventually destroy the tank if you destroy an engine there might not necessarily be uh, an explosion but a fire might occur and what what happens when uh, some of these cr modules are destroyed is that tank crew can become wounded um, there might not be any visual effects uh, that actually happens. It's just, you know, your crew becoming less efficient at what they're doing. But it could also be things that happen to the tank itself. I mean, that, that makes sense if module damage happens. Uh, so that's one interesting point to actually notice between World Tanks and War Thunder. If a module gets destroyed, uh, it might cause damage to the crew members inside. They might take secondary damage to what's going on with the modules, right? And they've listed it down what exactly happens, you know, depending what you hit, you know, the engine, it reduces power, the transmission, your maximum speed is reduced, train dot drive rotations are slower, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they also brought up some different things, of, you know, the gun elevation mechanism. Yes, you can damage that. I mean, World of Tanks doesn't really have that. Uh, it's more so just a turret ring and everything just becomes locked up. But they have a gun elevation mechanism where if you damage that, it just becomes... It, it lowers the gun elevation speed and if you completely destroy it, then it just blocks it and keeps it there. Now, they didn't actually mention if these are temporary effects or if they're permanent. If it gets destroyed, is it permanent? They didn't say anything uh, like that. However, they were talking about future things that they want to bring up in, in well, the future... Um, including cr crew damage model improvements and temporary penalties. Maybe that's what we were talking about just now. Uh, they were talking about tank machine guns. So rather than just having them as placeholders, just something, an added, you know, effect essentially on a tank, maybe you'll be able to actually do something with them. You know, shoot down planes uh, if they're coming in close. Might be, might be something that you could do. There are... Planning on adding in tank fire extinguishers? Oh my gosh, World of Tanks. I know they would have had ones in, in real life, but uh, when you just first see these things, it's just like, wow. Yeah, it's looking like uh, World of Tanks a little bit. Uh, there's also going to be armor protection modifiers, so depending on the armor that your tank is made of, whether it's rolled or cast steel, medium or high hardness. I'm surprised they didn't mention Stalinium or Leninium or putinium or whatever you know i'm surprised i didn't mention those probably be one millimeter thick and it'll just bounce off anything <laughs> bounce off an artillery shell um so so that'll be interesting they're also saying structural differences in the shell types the caps the shapes and whatnot so a lot of planned features whether they're going to make it into the game or not who knows but it's all left up to our fantasies what we might think will happen and can hope would happen so uh yeah that pretty much summarizes everything that they've been talking about in the last few days guys uh, lots of hypothetical stuff good to see that they have thoroughly thought out these things um and, and i'm looking forward to it that's all i can say so hope you guys enjoyed this and until the next video this is grebsy and i will catch you all next time